Well, we want to thank our sponsor, uh, Panasonic. Uh, did you know Panasonic supplies some of the top end uh, ventilation equipment to help uh, keep your clients' homes uh, ventilated and healthy? Um, this uh, 2017 International Building Show Award winners, the Panasonic IntelliBalance 100. This is a customizable, high-performance, high-efficiency energy recovery ventilator, or ERV, ideal for use in any climate zone, including areas like Canada. It has two revolutionary DC motors with smart flow technology to ensure optimum CFM output. Pick a flow speed selectors, 50 to 100 CFM, provide truly customizable air flow, balanced positive or negative pressure. Exclusive built-in ASHRAE 62.2 timing functions helps ensure code compliance and beyond. Connects to existing ductwork or uses a standalone for whole house ventilation solution. And can be used to meet green building certification requirements and help minimize the impact on your HERS index or ASHRAE scores. Uh, designed for multifamily dwellings and new airtight homes, it's built to meet the uh, energy efficiency standards, and it includes an exchange capillary core uh, for recovering heat, energy, and moisture. It comes with MERV-8 filtration, but optional 13 upgrade for replacements, and meets Ontario, Energy Star, and Novo climate requirements. Uh, can't spring for that, then you definitely want to check out the Panasonic uh, Whisper Green um, uh, Combo Select Cycler. Uh, this is a balanced home ventilation solution that is going to allow your uh, furnace to bring in the fresh air, and it will communicate with the bath fan uh, to ventilate that air as it's coming in, either through an intermittent or continuous exhaust, um, to bring in an affordable, balanced uh, solution to keep the home healthy. On top of that, make sure to check out their range hood pressure sensor, uh, which again is going to activate that fresh air to come in uh, when the range hood is running to ventilate and keep the kitchen healthy, uh, but ensure that balanced exhaust. Well, welcome to Comparing Residential Green Certifications, uh, part two. We're going to be focusing on energy baselines. This course is approved for one hour in continuing ed. Um, GBCI, AIBD, Mary Green, Certified Green Professional, and Green Home Professional, as well as AIA Health, Welfare, and Safety, or HSW. Uh, today I'll be uh, the presenter. My name is Brett Little, and I'm the Executive Director here at the Green Home Institute. The Green Home Institute is a nonprofit with a mission to empower people to make healthier and more sustainable choices in the renovation and construction of the places we live. Uh, this course here is going to be going over energy efficiency, which is the foundation of each rating system. Most of the requirements and credits are found in the energy portion of the programs. And knowing your energy efficiency targets helps you uh, know if the project budget will work and give your clients a sense of future costs for their budgets or tenant expenditures. Um, so let's jump into uh, part two, the energy baselines of the green building programs. And this is a four-part series, so um, if don't worry if you missed session one, that's okay. Still welcome to take this out of order. Um, and so we're going to be doing energy program baselines today. The next session is prerequisites of the green programs. And then we're going to be looking at um, the five um, uh, key uh, or the five pillars of green uh, through the lens of the credits in the programs. And so when you see energy, there's a lot of different terms depending on what rating system you're looking at. Uh, energy and atmosphere, energy efficiency, energy conservation, zero energy, zero energy capable, net zero energy, and net positive energy um, are just to name a few. There's a lot of different terminologies. Those are some of the, the main ones you're going to be seeing when you're looking at some of these different rating systems. And they all kind of stem from the codes and where the codes are and then going above and beyond what those codes are. So, you know, commercial code rating systems follow both IECC um, for the prescriptive pathway, and then they foul um, ASHRAE 90.1 and a percentage above that for the uh, for the performance pathway. And then residential codes again foul the International Energy Conservation Code or IECC um, for the uh, mostly for the prescriptive pathways, and then um, HERS index ratings, of course, for the uh, for the performance pathways. So the IECC sets these codes. And then each state can either adopt them as is, can improve upon them, 
or can dumb them down. So, for example, in Michigan now, we are in IECC 2015, but that can be slightly misleading because we actually, um, in some ways, have dumbed down the 2015 International Code. Um, so we are some sort of hybrid between 15 and 12, and many other states actually have, uh, have done that as well. Um, and then there's also green codes coming down the pipeline. So there are many jurisdictions now who have the ability to adopt um, codes, um, stretch codes above their state's code, which Michigan can't do, um, haven't been able to adopt these codes. So they kind of expand out from just energy and start to look at health materials, place, and water conservation uh, within the code. And so be on the lookout now for um, the International Green Construction Code and having that also be adopted under the ASHRAE 189.1-2014 and beyond on the commercial side. IGCC is residential, ASHRAE 189.1 is, is commercial. All right, so energy scores and ratings. That's really where we're going to be starting off here. And these are just sort of your basic ratings that take place, um, energy efficiency assessments that take place that are typically required um, before work starts, uh, during pre-drywall, and then during a final inspection. Most of these programs, in one way or another, all require these things. So the very first one is the Department of Energy Home Energy Score, which actually this is a little out of date, but it's now 100,000 homes scored. So this is basically the existing homes miles per gallon label uh, that has been quickly evolving uh, across the country. It's a three through 10 rating, um, whereas uh, most rating, some rating systems have the higher number, meaning uh, <clears throat> higher energy use. In this case, the higher number, uh, you know, a 10, a perfect 10, um, is going to be the, uh, the, the lower uh, energy usage in this. Um, and this program is only applicable to single family homes, uh, can work on single family production and it's designed mostly for uh, renovations and remodels to give information to home performance contractors and homeowners on where and when to spend their money. Um, so this is just kind of a, a review of what the assessment prints out. It's basically like a home inspection of the existing home. Uh, the cool thing is, is it can be used for new construction as well, um, which is a quick, low and dirty way to get a home energy assessment done without um, going through the HERS index rating, which we'll talk about here in a minute. Um, again, it just gives the energy, predicted energy usage, uh, costs, um, what those conversion ratios are, and then it's going to give, based on the assessor's input values, it's going to give all the details they found in the house um, on walls, on the roof, the attic, uh, all the way from the construction type to color, to floor insulation, to ceiling insulation. Um, it's going to give foundation detailed information, both on the floors and under the slab. Uh, it's going to give uh, window to wall ratio percentages, um, which makes a huge impact on the score. Uh, window types, uh, skylights if they exist. And then, of course, it's going to take a deep dive into the mechanical system, uh, heating, cooling, ducts in condition space, yes, no. Um, if there's more than one HVAC system, and then of course the uh, the hot water system is, is involved in that as well. Um, and notice you won't see appliances or lighting. So one of the intentions of this program is to be very fast, very quick, but yet still accurate. And so, um, you know, lighting and appliances um, in comparison to windows, walls, and HVAC doesn't use that much energy. So the program just assumes everybody's already got a, a, a an efficient score or an efficient appliance use. So what this score will do is it will spit out automated recommendations on things that the client, your uh, homeowner clients should repair immediately um, or your builder clients, and then what they should replace uh, later. And again, uh, you can use this for a preliminary plan review on a new construction project and give recommendations on how to build better um, if you're not, if they're not going to be going through a full um, HERS index rating, this still could be a useful tool to do that. And then you'll see, it'll say, okay, yeah, if you follow all these recommendations, here's where your score is. And then you as, if you, if you or yourselves are working with an assessor, you can um, push this score in any direction that you want, just depending on how you beef up those recommendations um, in the report, in the tool. So who can do this? There's a growing list of sort of baseline um, programs 
across the country that you can have um, to, to become a, a DOE Home Energy Score assessor uh, and use this tool to make informed design, design and construction decisions or do rating. So here's just sort of a list that, uh, you know, continues to grow. Uh, the Lead Green Associates is one of them. Um, and then I wanted to also mention that this, um, this, this program is free. Um, so once you have one of these credentials, it's free to do the training online. Um, so that's pretty neat. So you can incorporate it into your design and construction practices if you like, or if you're a rater, you can use it. All right, so this is the most popular um, rating across the country for low-rise residential homes. This is the HERS index rating, home energy rating score, home energy rating system. Um, and so this is applicable to uh, many types of buildings. Um, Multi-family mid-rise, it's just starting to get into. It really wasn't available for that, and now it is. Um, we're even starting, we even had a project go through that was six stories, um, went through the HERS index rating, and so we know that they are pushing the envelope on how far you can rate a building um, and, you know, as well as mixed-use space. Uh, of course, the HERS index rating for the commercial space doesn't give as accurate of detail, um, depending on how that space is being used since the tool is set up to anticipate residential use, um, but it can be used for the mixed use space in many of these green building programs. Um, one of the problems with homes that aren't doing gut rehabs for the HERS index rating is that it's a very clunky, expensive tool to use for these homes, and um, it requires a pre-drywall to be done. So sometimes a HERS rater may look the other way and, and not, you know, they'll still give you the score without the pre-drywall, it happens all the time. Um, but uh, one of the problems is if they can't see the insulation behind the wall, um, what they do is they grade that insulation on a one to three, I think one being the best. And so if they can't see the insulation, physically see it, which is one of the values of a HERS rating, uh, they have to give it the worst grading. So, um, you know, in many aspects, we, we see it as a very clunky tool and highly recommend the home energy score um, for these types of projects. But it is being done and it, uh, you know, certainly can be done um, to be sure. Um, this program is delivered by the Residential Energy Service Network, um, and so that is a nonprofit that is set up to um, manage this program on behalf of the Environmental Protection Agency, and it has been around for, what, 21 years now, so very successful uh, program, and they develop all the standards, they have a consensus-based review, they're very transparent in their adoption of the program and um, they have membership involved in it. And so it's definitely an open program that people can get involved in and help influence if they wanna see it improve. Um, so the HERS index rating kind of works like um, a scale that goes from 100, which is a what we call a built to code home or a 2006 IECC code home to a zero energy home, which is a zero. Uh, and then anything higher than that are old clunky existing homes. And it's looking at many of those things we talked about in the in the DOE's home energy score, but it's also adding in lighting, appliances, solar orientation, um, and a few other items, um, se several more inputs than what the DOE, I mean, I think it's, you know, 20 times the amount of inputs than the DOE home energy score has, which we're not going to get into all of them today, but it really has more information that you can put into the system um, for the rating. Um, the home energy rating certificate is produced at the end of the project to give to the builder, the homeowner, the architect, you name it. It gives the HERS index rating and then again all of the features of the home. And then also what the predicted energy use and costs are going to be so homeowners can make informed decisions during the preliminary design stage, again, on what their green points they're going to be going after um, and then what, uh, you know, maybe even what their, their mortgage is going to be. Uh, this is just a quick thing that Rocky Mountain Institute put together. Uh, it's a little dated now, but it kind of shows where each of the codes fall at and each of some of the green building programs fall on sort of this baseline um, HERS index rating, but it definitely needs to be needs to be updated. So, um, so ResNet is in, responsible for training all of the HERS raters. Um, so to become a HERS rater, you have to have a background in the construction industry. Um, a small background, a short background. You you take a two-week training. I think some of them can be done online. Um, and then you have to do a uh, mentoring in the field 
on a couple projects, pre-drywall and post-drywall with a HERS rater or with your provider. Um, so it's a pretty intense training. So these folks are credentialed and they really go through this intense training um, uh, to make sure that they, you know, folks you're working with who are resident raters, you know, know what they're doing, know how to assess energy. Not only that, but now they're getting into um, indoor air quality safety issues that BPI does. So they also have to be able to know how to assess uh, potential carbon monoxide risks on existing homes um, or people who are installing um, water heaters that are naturally drafted. They have to know how to test those now um, to be in compliance. Um, so when you're doing verification, both for the HERS rater and the home energy score assessor, these tend to be third party, um, but they can be someone on your staff, uh, which we're also seeing some more of that if you're a design or build team um, or developer. And if they are someone like that, then they're going to be needing to sign the conflict of interest form. Um, so the HERS rating is growing exponentially. Uh, in 2016, there were 16,000 more homes rated than in 2015. I think it was about a third of all new construction and low-rise multifamily had a HERS rating. You can see the six leading states, and I was proud to see Indiana here in the Midwest um, was in the top five, interestingly enough. Um, but here in 2016, you can see the six leading states, uh, clearly Texas, um, you know, if you're talking about volumes of homes being built, well then statistically you're going to have more numbers. 22% um, average in 2016, so that was um, a, uh, so that's percent of uh, construction going on in each state and what percentage it is. So it was 22% in 2016 was the, was the average number and you can see, you can go on their website and just see you know, what states um, are using the HERS index rating and what percent of the homes are adopting it. And then the average HERS index rating, so again, remember, every drop in that level is a 1% gain in efficiency. So 62 or somewhere around the International Energy Code 2012, it was the average um, rating in 2016. And again, you can go to their website and you can see uh, what the average was and congratulations to Maine, they had an average of 26, though they only did 3%, so take that for what it is. Um, so again, the demand continues to grow uh, for HERS index ratings. Um, I, we, you know, it'll, it'll probably just be a matter of time before all new homes have any uh, miles per gallon rated, so similar to how a car does. Uh, it'll become to be expected from homeowners. And when they're hiring you to build, when they're hiring you to be a designer, those are the questions they're going to ask. They're going to say, what are your average HERS ratings coming in at? And, you know, the HERS rating is impacted by the team, the HVAC, the builder, the architect. Each person plays their role. Um, but, you know, those are going to be questions you'll want to keep in your portfolio and say, yeah, you know, my a lot of architects we work with, they kind of have that average number and they have their highs and their lows. And they say, this is what we're usually getting based on our design based on our contractor practices, based on our HVAC installs. And so these are going to be very important numbers moving forward. Lenders, realtors, appraisers are going to be asking for these as well. Um, so make sure that, uh, you know, you get aware of these. And here's just a quick comparison chart on how DOE's home energy score compares to ResNet. Um, and, you know, again, this is a little bit dated, but you can see best score 10, best score 0 on the HERS. Um, small homes tend to score better um, in, the HERS, in the home energy score rating, while bigger homes tend to score better in the HERS index rating because they're using energy per square foot, while this is using just total energy. 5% um, of the homes must be reviewed, uh, quality assurance must be done, um, and then 1% of the homes for the HERS index rating is what quality assurance must be done. Um, the home energy score has no alignment with the International Energy Conservation Code. There's simply no easy way to try to line it up with the construction code by any means. Um, whereas the HERS index rating is fully aligned and continues to be aligned um, with the IECC. All right, so moving on to our four story and above friends, um, we're gonna be looking at the ASHRAE uh, 90.1 uh, rating system. This system is only applicable to uh, four stories and up, mid-rise multifamily, mixed use, and of course, 
uh, it's really applied to commercial buildings, um, which is where it has most of its traction. But um, that's what it's being used on as far as that. And it can be used on existing um, gut rehabs and moderate rehabs as well. Um, so ASHRAE kind of works in this sort of energy use intensity. So every time you see a new version of ASHRAE come out, uh, right now we're in 2010 is kind of where everybody's pegged to, but even the state of Michigan is upgraded to 2013 now. Um, then you'll know that if a building is, for example, um, you know, a 90.1 2010, then you'll know it has a 55 energy use intensity. So that's energy per square foot per year. And so, you know, uh, like, for example, for lead, you have to be 5% above that. So it's a real quick way to somewhat be able to articulate to somebody how efficient their building is per square foot per year. Now, that doesn't tell you how much energy it uses, but it does tell you if they're trying to compare themselves to all of their neighbors and their friends, um, you know, what the uh, what the energy use uh, is um, in that in that context compared to all the other buildings. Um, and it, and I to be to be fair, ASHRAE rating does give um, does give your energy use as a printout, and we'll look at that here in a second. But um, and then so one thing that's unique is that ASHRAE uh, 90.1 2016 has launched, and the goal of that is to sort of cut through some of the confusion because again, when someone tells you they have an ASHRAE uh, 2007 building versus a 10 versus a 13. Well, what does that mean? It's very confusing. So what they've done with 2016 is they've pegged it to the 20, 2004 pay, baseline. And so moving forward, it will just be a percentage reduction above the 2004 baseline or roughly, you know, an EUI of 75. So we'll always know what the savings are. Um, and there'll be more information and we're going to do a session on that coming shortly. Mm. So the building, um, so ASHRAE now is credentialing professionals similar to the HERS index rating. The difference is you're not required to be one to use this tool. But I think it's going to be very important moving forward if you're trying to do a development, um, you know, a multifamily mixed use development, that you, you, you know, you, there are energy modelers out there um, who may just kind of put some stuff down on the paper and just kind of give you something. And then I think there are other folks who are going to take it the next level and become uh, credentialed, really understand how to use this tool to make effective decisions um, during the preliminary design stages. And so there's modeling professionals, and then there are um, credentialed assessment professionals. So again, if you either because you're required through a green rating system or because um, because you want to have it done, you can work with these credentialed assessment professionals to assess during pre-drywall or during final that the energy model that you received is actually correct um, and make adjustments if it's not um, based on what was actually done in the building. Um, so verification for ASHRAE 90.1 tends to be the staff of an engineer or design firm. That just That's just the way it is. So it's never typically ever third party. Uh, it's not usually required to be third party in most of these rating programs. Uh, there are some large um, lead rater firms now that do offer this service as a third party entity, if there's interest in that. All right, moving on to the next level is the Woofy passive software. This is a very a robust and intensive software that goes into all sorts of design components. One of the ones that sticks out for me is that it actually, to my, to my limited understanding, is it, it takes into account the hydro flows and movements of water on your site and how that might impact the transfer of energy from your building into the ground. I don't think ASHRAE does that. And so that's just one thing that always stuck out to me. It really is an intense, in-depth energy model to help hit the Passive House US uh, targets. And it is completely, there is a free version of it on FIAS's website. So you can check that out. And, and then um, the international version of Passive House has the Passive House planning package um, again, so that is a really in-depth energy analysis um, done by a Passive House consultant. And I don't know if that can be done. Uh, I don't know if you can grab that program for free or not. And this, um, these are applicable. I shouldn't have left that here um, because now they are applicable to additions and weatherization projects. Um, so that's my mistake. Um, but these, these, these tools are applicable to all building types now, um, even commercial, um, despite Passive House's name. Um, I threw this in here because I found this to be a really cool tool for developers who are trying to make quick, informed decisions 
on upgrading um, energy efficiency and water efficiency fixtures in their building. I also got the green light from the Home Innovations Lab that they would accept this program for their um, renovation certification. So it's a completely open source, free to use program that has a really great training resources for it. Um, the only downside to it is that unfortunately um, it's coming out of California. So um, apparently in California with the climate being the way it is, they don't care about the walls there on retrofit. So this program unfortunately has no way to make improvements to the walls or ceiling as far as uh, heat transfer or uh, a conduction. It does have convection through blower door testing though. On the flip side, the other cool thing is it does a good job of assessing uh, water fixture um, reduction in heat, um, hot water demand from water fixtures. So you can account for that in your energy savings as well, um, unlike some other rating systems that do not account for um, water fixture, fixture flow reduction rates. So again, this has been adopted by National Green Building Standard. Um, we will accept it too in the Green Star program as well. And this is applicable to all building types, though more focused on your uh, on your multifamily low to mid rise. All right, so those were the rating programs. Let's get into the energy certification programs. Um, the first one is the Energy Star program, um, which is uh, currently under control of the Energy or the Environmental Protection Agency or EPA. There is. Uh, a proposal going around now to ship it over to the Department of Energy. Um, so take that for what it is. Um, but right now it is currently a uh, EPA program. Um, so the HERS index rating is your baseline energy rating that you are required to have to meet a uh, Energy Star home. So there's no way to get an Energy Star home without having a HERS index rating. And it's the HERS index raters who are trained to deliver Energy Star certification. So they're the ones who are delivering it um, along with the uh, required HERS index rating. So in Energy Star, um, you're looking at two different checklists, the thermal enclosure inspection checklist. This is um, signed off by both the builder and the rater and it's inspecting certain prerequisites um, of installation quality in the field um, for the tight thermal envelope. Um, and then the HVAC quality installation system. So unlike the old version two, we're now basically requiring that the HVAC do commissioning um, somewhat, somewhat similar to commercial on um, Energy Star version three. So there's a lot of commissioning, right sizing of ducts. Um, if a project is not using any ducts, um, going duct free and using mini splits, there's actually a lot less work uh, currently that the HVAC has to do. And then there was an optional water management system that used to be required and then they just got rid of it, um, but it still is a guidance pathway that's also been picked up by some of the other green rating systems for the Energy Star program. So Energy Star version three is applicable to all the way up to sort of that sort of five story uh, threshold. We haven't heard of a project going above five stories to get this certification. Then they typically go in the Energy Star high rise program. And um, gut rehabs on their own are going to be very difficult. Um, there are some exemptions for the slab and additions or remodels are just impossible for this program because you've got to tear out the walls of the interior, the exterior to uh, see that the thermal bridging has been prevented. And so it's just a pretty much an impossible program to use on something like that. Um, one of the unique things about this is it uses a sliding HERS index rating. So um, depending on your benchmark home, so your, your, your square footage to bedroom ratio, and with these green building programs, a lot of times if you've got more bedrooms, less square footage, uh, you're rewarded and then vice versa, you're penalized. So Energy Star has a, what we call a floating HERS index rating or a sliding scale now. So where the target used to be 85, uh, now the target floats between 75 and 65. Remember 65 is better, um, depending on what your um, benchmark home is. And so, you know, the, the, the better your home is, the, the worse of a score you can get, you know, the smaller your home is. Um, and then vice versa. So that sort of adjusts for that issue that you saw with the HERS index rating, which is rewarding larger homes. It sort of does. 
Okay, so here's um, just a quick example, and these are in your handouts online on box.com on what's going to be getting checked by the uh, raider in the field, what the builder needs to adopt into their quality management program. So they're checking their subs to make sure all this is in there. And so this is the thermal enclosure checklist. And then there is a HVAC checklist that the HVAC is going to do during the design stage and then during the install stage um, and be checking off all these things, commissioning the HVAC. And then the Raider is going to come through um, and they're going to be um, checking off on the uh, HVAC's um, commissioning report. Um, another interesting requirement of building an Energy Star home is that you have to be an Energy Star um, builder partner. Um, this is completely free. It requires you go online, you register with Energy Star, and that you take some online training modules, all free. I think it's, you know, maybe two hours of training um, and then get listed and then um, you can certify. So they are uh, actually requiring that now. And then uh, what's unique is that the HVAC uh, professional has to be credentialed as well now to certify an Energy Star Homes program. And so uh, what they were finding is a lot of HVAC professionals and what we found when we trained about 500 of them is there was a huge knowledge gap of being a high performance home HVAC contractor. And so now there is a credentialing and training involved in that. And so um, you can go to the EPA's website and if you're doing do an Energy Star program, you can find these credentialed contractors and hire them. And if you have an HVAC that you work with, you can, um, you can send them online to go here and, and, you know, get some initial training that's free from the EPA on exactly what they need to know and what they need to do to become a credentialed contractor. And then they're going to be kicked off to either uh, ACA's program. So if, typically if you're a larger firm, if they're a larger firm, that's an ACA membership, it behooves them to take that route. Uh, and then we see a lot of the smaller firms um, take the advanced energy contractor training. So right now, these are the only two credentialing organizations. And this is all done online, uh, open book, open note test uh, that your contractor can do. So if you have a contractor that you like, get them in um, and they can take the training. Or like I said, you can go to one of these websites and find um, you know more information. And then we also have a, a quick introduction training to the Energy Star Homes program and the HVAC credentialing um, on our website as well. All right, so market penetration. So you can go on their website and take a look and you can see here in the light blue, um, less than 5% of the homes in the country uh, get Energy Star certification in 2016. And you can see in the real darker shade here, like in Nevada, Arizona, you can see greater than 25% of the homes are getting that certification. So overall, um, you know, since version two updated to version three, we still see a huge drop off from the program, a huge resistance. I think at one point it was 30%, 35% market penetration um, overall. And you can see how significantly it hasn't recovered yet um, from that. Um, oh, so yeah, so state, so countrywide, we're at 9.77. Um, so you can take a look at these reports uh, and see what's going on in your state, uh, energystar.gov, new homes, and, uh, get an update there. And this was a cool study that was done um, on Energy Star versus non-Energy Star homes during the economic downturn on 71,000 homes, big pool. And it showed that those homes um, that were Energy Star labeled had a 32% lower uh, mortgage default risk. And if you keep reading in the data, you'll find the ones that had lower or better HERS ratings for each one, for each 4% um, or four, I think four point drop, there was a 1% reduction in that default risk. So that really goes to show when you're working with your clients to reduce their energy, um, you know, once we, when we hit another downturn here again, um, you know, this will help them buffer against that uh, expense by having less to pay on the utility side. And there's just full, there's evidence of that now. Um, so third party verification. So again, this is uh, Energy Star can be done via second party. Uh, similar to the HERS index rating, um, visual um, and site inspections of the pre-drywall of the final. And, you know, again, it can be done by second party, but often, uh, often third party is what we see in practice. And then um, Energy Star and HERS ratings um, are going to be uh, rated by a third party 
HERS index provider. So they're actually coming in and checking during pre-drywall and final 1% of their HERS raters work to ensure that it's in compliance and then, you know, obviously either, you know, hopefully work with them or, or suspend them if they are outside of compliance. Um, and then at some point there's an intention of getting HERS certificates on all of the units of like a multifamily building, um, but that, you know, remains to be seen. Um, so the cool thing about the HERS index rating is to save you and your clients money is you can do sampling. Um, so if you've got a large track home development with similar projects going in or a large multifamily development, they can actually uh, sample a certain subset of, of those. And typically that's the first seven and then one out of seven. Um, and so again, you know, if there's failures um, that occur, then they have to start sampling more. Um, but if you've got a good construction team, a good tight quality assurance uh, management going on, quality management protocol, uh, then the likely chance is you won't, um, you won't have any failures. And so um, that is one, you know, make sure you're telling, if you've got a big project, make sure you're telling the HERS rater to sample. And if they're, you know, not refusing to do so, um, you know, you know, know that you have other options out there um, to cut some of the fees on that. Um, or you may find on your first project or two that you are doing HERS that you want to have somebody go through and check that all. And some raters do say, you know, on your first project, they really want to see you do that. Um, just to make sure everything's done right. And so that's, you know, a conversation to have with your with your rater. So all right, so here is the Energy Star um report. Um this is kind of again a sort of what gets kicked out that you you the ideal goals that's getting put in sort of the homeowner manual. It's in listed in the sh the sheet if the house is being sold. Um it's kind of a selling application that can be done in the future you know, placed on the um, the uh, sticker that can be placed on the electric box or put down in the HVAC um, room with the rest of the manuals to, to showcase sort of the energy efficiency features of the home. Um, and I know we're talking about energy today, but I wanted to quick touch on these other items, and that is the Indoor Air Plus program. So the Indoor Air Plus program is an EPA program that if you're if you're a solid Energy Star builder and you want to start doing air quality and promoting air quality, this is a great stepping stone. So you've got Energy Star down, now you want to get into indoor air quality and they've, and they've got a solution for you. So this program is going to be looking at moisture control, radon control, pest management solutions, heating, ventilation, air conditioning, improvements as far as comfort goes, uh, combustion venting, and then even getting into um, the reduced emissions from the types of building materials you're specking. So this is a uh, black or white program. It's a pass fail. There is no credit to it. So um, it's kind of that next level if you want to start promoting energy efficient and um, and full blown healthy homes. Um, so again, here's the certificate that you would get um, for certifying to to this standard. Your HERS index rater is the one who would be responsible for checking all of this on a separate checklist. And so you would be working with them at the beginning to understand what their costs are because this is just more stuff that they have to verify while they're, while they're in the field. Um, and then we've got the uh, EPA's water sense program. And unlike Indoor Air Plus, this is a standalone program, and you can certify to it with or without Energy Star. Um, this program is a full-blown water conservation program delivered by the EPA through the HERS Index Energy Star Rater. So again, they're the ones responsible checking all this stuff. It's looking at leaks, pressure testing, hot water delivery, plumbing fixtures, um, as far as water sense labels, uh, dishwasher and clothes washer uh, thresholds. And it even has a cool water budget tool, which can be used by your landscape architect, um, who can also give um, homeowners an idea of the demand of their lawn on and how much water it's going to need, so they can make more informed decisions on what kind of plants they're putting in and irrigation systems they're putting in um, if they want to reduce water usage in their lawn. And so there is a certain threshold that has to be met um, and then some of the other green build programs actually use this to go above and beyond and score points in them. Um, and then it also looks at some different stuff for pools and spas if you, if you have those to make sure they're water efficient. 
Um, and one real cool thing for all these programs for the DOE or through uh, EPA or whoever is the uh, is the um, is the uh, um, builder Building America Solution Center. So you can go online and get some really cool information, and it even goes into like all of these different details. So you know description, how this varies by climate zone. Uh, is there training on this? Um, it can, are there some pre-built drawings you can use? And that goes through each of the credits or requirements, rather, of Energy Star, Indoor Air Plus, um, um, and Zero Energy Ready. So it's a pretty cool um, tool out there for you to use. Uh, and I always thought this was interesting. This is Tom Phillips, who is the Sustainability uh, Director for Habitat for Humanity of Michigan. And if you ever get a chance to meet him, he's fantastic. Uh, and he'll make you a great, he, he makes great beer too. So come up to the Habitat for Humanity Michigan event and stick around for the after hours. But uh, he always calls um, these three programs, Energy Star, Indoor Air Plus, and Water Sense, sort of the trifecta of green. And so these are sort of your, 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 your three key areas that you could focus on if you want to use um, the Energy Star EPA programs and work with a HERS rater uh, to deliver this and sort of go above and beyond um, on the energy requirements. All right, so mostly we were talking about low rise there for those energy rating systems, uh, low to mid rise, but now we're going to get in more into the Energy Star multifamily high rise program, which works differently than the low rise program. So this program is only applicable to four plus story multifamily, not commercial, uh, mid rise projects to high rise. And it can apply to uh, mixed use buildings but as long as they have more residential space in them. Um, it's voluntary program. It's designed to be at least 15% more efficient than ASHRAE 90.1-2007. There's testing, verification, and then there's benchmarking that happens at the end of the program. Um, similar to the other programs we talked about, it's looking at all of the same details uh, installation, insulation, effective quality, so it does require pre-drywall inspection, properly sized equipment, tight ducts, uh, lighting, Energy Star lighting, high efficiency appliances, high performance windows, and then testing and verification of all of those items. Um, again, it's, 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 if you are using it for commercial facilities, it can be used for motel, or I'm sorry, it can't be used um, for motels, hotels, no nursing rooms, assisted living, or dormitories. So it's only for purely residential purposes. Um, and again, here's just some of the other um, requirements that, uh, you know, at least 50% of the occupiable square foot of the entire building needs to be uh, residential associated. Um, so again, it's starting to look at uh, um, new construction or substantially rehabilitated multifamily buildings with five or more dwellings. Um, four to five stories and has either central heating, cooling, or hot water. So again, they're really going after the central heating and cooling systems. Um, and then um, new construction that has five or six or more stories. So again, if you're, if you're in one of these four or five thresholds and you have decentralized systems, then it probably makes more sense to use the low-rise Energy Star program. And how do you get the label? So there's two different pathways. There's the performance and the prescriptive pathway um, to meet this. Um, and then there's also uh, benchmarking that has to go on uh, one year later, which uses the EPA uh, portfolio manager um, to ensure you're on track. And we'll go into that in a little bit. Um, so you have to become somewhat similar to the uh, the Energy Star for low rise. You have to become a developer partner and commit to the requirements, go through a little bit of online free training, um, and then you have to submit an application to get into this. Um, the prerequisite performance pathway, again, is going to be looking at all of these different items. And one thing that's unique is they're looking at pump motor efficiency um, for certain types of projects that you might not see on the uh, low rise side of things. Um, and apparently, it's also looking at some of the energy efficiency of uh, like sidewalk heating equipment. <clears throat> um, so REM rate is not used. They're using the Appendix G um, requirements of EQUEST, DOE2, HAP, Energy Gauge, Energy Plus. There's a lot of them out there. 
and that's basically essentially the ASHRAE 90.1-2007 standard for now. I'm sure it'll update to 2010 relatively soon. And um, and then the building ideally earns the uh, the Energy Star the Energy Star label. Or I guess uh, let me backtrack there. Um, so when you see a building like this, um, and you'll and you'll see them around. What this is saying is that they, they've used the, uh, the Energy Star um, Portfolio Manager certification. So this is, as it sees, 15 years of being certified. This is an ongoing uh, certification that a building can obtain um, through the Energy Star Portfolio Manager program. Um, and so this program is not designed for low rise. It's designed, it was primarily designed for commercial, but two years ago they just adopted a multifamily standard. Um, but the but it can only be used for 20 or more units um, within a built within one building. So the building has to contain 20 or more units to be applicable to the Energy Star Portfolio Manager program. And so here's the the Portfolio Manager program. And then um, if you're trying to make informed de design decisions, either in a renovation or new construction, um, you can use the Energy Star Target Finder where you can put in some details and information about what you plan to do to the building, and then it will spit back what your Energy Star score um, could potentially be. Um, so here's an example. This one's for an office building. I couldn't find one for multifamily, but this is sort of like the printout, uh, the details. As long as the score is 75 or higher, you have achieved Energy Star, and then it just kind of gives all the details, all the consumption details, your square foot, details. And again, remember, this score is based on comparing, um, 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 you know, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the building to another building in its um, same sort of size and climate zone category. Um, and so you're really, your score is a comparative not to yourself, but a comparative to the rest of the, the industry and how you're doing. So as the industry continues to uh, improve, this score could potentially go down if you're recertifying every year. And so somebody weighed in, Energy Star has recently proposed to merge the low-rise and energy uh, high-rise multifamily framework. So that's that's great. I think there's a lot of connections there, and um, I'll definitely be looking into that. So thanks for sharing that, Kevin. Okay, so energy in green. Let's jump into that real quick. So what you really have here is um, prescriptive versus uh, performance baselines. Um, so prescriptive uh, point, points are based on in individual energy improvements, thermal envelope, HVAC lighting, appliance, solar, et cetera. Uh, and, and, and depending on the program and the system, it does not always necessarily require uh, an energy efficiency credentialed professional uh, to deliver it. So in some ways, um, you can avoid the cost of that professional if you're taking the prescriptive pathway. On the performance pathway of these rating systems, you're getting formal energy modeling, rating done, um, and it's based on a reduction beyond some sort of baseline, and then it typically requires some sort of credentialed uh, professional to achieve that. So let's take a look at some of the performance pathway requirements of each of the uh, green building rating systems. So again, here's just sort of our list uh, comparative of each of these rating systems and how they sort of uh, fall on the sustainability continuum. Um, and so as you fall to the left here, you look at um, is it required to have an energy rating professional to certify one of these programs? And then as you get more to the right here, these programs are uh, requiring energy rating uh, professionals. And so um, some of these programs like LEED kind of find themselves in enterprise green communities, um, kind of find themselves in the middle of that. And so as you go along this continuum, you're really looking at, again, um, not only do you require one, but how much do they have to be involved um, on the program? All right, so let's look at GBI, Green Building Initiative Green Globes. Um, this program has four different performance pathways, each worth 100 points, 
plus apparently 50 bonus points in path C and 25 bonus points in path D to achieve that. Um, path A is using the Energy Star target finder that we talked about. So again, that's not using the Energy Star label um, for uh, an existing building, but it is using the Energy Star target finder, which effectively gets you the same results but it's not based on actual utility bills, it's based on planned improvements. Um, or they're at using ASHRAE 90.1 uh, 2010. Again, these are all optional, though. These are not required. Um, or they're using the ANSI GBA Energy Performance Building C2OE, which I have no clue what that is, and or the ASHRAE BEQ, which I don't know what that is either. Uh, to be quite honest, it's not involved in any of the other rating programs. So um, you can tell that apparently they they like path C and D. Um, it must be something new, something different. As you can see, they're rewarding you extra points to take those two paths. So if anybody knows what those paths are, though, you know, feel free to chime in. Um, you know, we just for the context of this program, we didn't investigate them further because they. Uh, are not found in any of the other rating systems. One thing you have to remember about Green Globes is that the performance pathway is not required and it allows, in my opinion, double dipping. So what double dipping means is that let's say you're using the Energy Star portfolio uh, or, or let's say you're using ASHRAE. Well, you know, better insulation, improved, reduced air infiltration, better windows, better lighting, all that is going to get you a better score here in Path B, right? Okay, so then you can also go through the prescriptive pathway, which we'll get into later, and sort of say, yep, we did the LED lighting. Yep, we have high performance windows. Yep, we have better insulation. Boom, you're also going to pick up points there. So uh, it's effectively a double dipping program in that sense that you're snagging your points um, in both the energy model, if you pursue it, and the prescriptive. And so clearly by pursuing the performance pathway, you can pick up a ton of extra points for things you already are doing, it just requires that you hire an energy rater and bring them on to help you uh, effectively assess that. All right, so the Home Innovations Lab, remember that is the subset of the National Association of Home Builders. Um, this is the National Green Building Standard Program. This program is currently built on IECC 2009 as its baseline. And then um, IACC 2012, Energy Star, and using a full-blown HERS index rating is currently optional. Um, and then you can get to the Home Innovations. What's really interesting about Home Innovation Lab and really smart on their part is that they have pegged themselves to the requirements of the International Green Construction Code. So to my limited understanding, if you can get a silver certified um, uh, National Green Building Standard Program, you're effectively meeting the unchanged code. Remember, jurisdictions can change codes, but you're effectively meeting the intent of IGCC if you're hitting silver. So they've really intelligently pegged themselves to this because as more jurisdictions begin to adopt these green construction codes and use IGC as their foundation, well then, if you're already following this and hitting silver level, um, then you're already in compliance with the upcoming green code, whenever that may may be. And so IGCC is all um, black or white. There's no points involved, but there are different things you can do. Uh, so and Home Innovations Lab does have um, different, you know, many different credits you can use, but um, you just know that if you're following the, the basic thresholds, you're pretty close to IGCC. <clears throat> so if you're looking at um, the HERS index rating, um, the National Green Building Standard effectively requires you to um, be 15% above 2009 IECC to get bronze, 30 above silver, 40 above gold, and 50, um, 50 above that to get emerald. And this is kind of what it sort of loosely translates into HERS index ratings. Now that can change depending on your climate zone, but this is sort of just a, an average an average number. So these are baseline thresholds. You have to hit these thresholds um, on top of the other green points in the rating system just to achieve this. <clears throat> so again, to put that in context, this is 50% 50, <coughs> 50 better than the average 
um, a code because the average code I think is IECC 2009 across the US. If you're using the remodeling program for National Green Building Standard, uh, they're a little bit different than any other rating system. What they do is they say, use a program to determine the building's uh, cost of heating. So not energy use, but cost, cost of cooling, cost of water heating, yada, yada. Put it in here and then drop in the square footage before and the square footage after. So if the square footage increases, it's going to work against you. If it decreases, it's going to work um, in your favor. Um, so this is multifamily and single family. And then again, um, do an analysis, uh, ideally before you do any work, um, so you're not surprised, uh, on the same thing based on the improvements and based on the cost. And so again, this is looking at cost savings. So um, very different than any other rating system, which is looking at energy savings. So if you're in a utility area with low energy rates, uh, you're going to get less numbers here to save. Whereas if you're in an area with high utility rates, you're going to get higher numbers. So they're really looking at, and these are these are today's costs. They're not looking at the 2% predicted increase in cost across the life of the mortgage. Um, they're purely looking at today's cost. So um, this is a different way of looking at it. Um, it certainly allows for, in my opinion, a more easy way to pursue a green program on a on a renovation um, where other programs make you sort of hit a baseline standard. And then again, here's for just an example for new construction. You can see you have to get this many points um, in the rating system, and that's based on the 2009 um, IECC analysis. So it's not based on your HERS index rating, but how well you're doing above IECC which is effectively done through REM rate. Now, if you want to do some of this on your own, I highly encourage you to go to REM Design and download uh, the REM Design software. It's free, you get free 90 days, and you can actually make informed energy decisions on your next project um, before you hire a rater to see um, you know, how you're doing either in this area on new construction for National Green Building Standard or how you're doing in this area. It'll give you all these details pre and post work in this area. And again, since NGBS doesn't require a HERS rating, you can kind of be a little more empowered to um, figure some of this stuff out again before you, you bring on that, that HERS index. And then one of the neat things about REM design is that you can generate your performance details and you can zip it off to your HERS rater and then they can kind of take it and then build off of it and just make sure it's accurate rather than hiring them to do all that work. And then in many cases, we find the HERS Raiders data points, because there's a thousand data points, are off of what you actually spec in your plans or your building or your design. And so this is one, one way, if you want to dive into energy rating design, that you can sort of do a little more quality control on your ratings, in my opinion. And so we have a few architects that do successfully do that. It just takes a little more extra um, effort. Um, so interestingly, the National Green Building Standard looks at Energy Star as sort of this baseline starting point. So if you want to certify an Energy Star version 3 home, you can automatically achieve bronze, but you can't go any further than bronze in the National Green Building Standard program. You, you, you can go further, but you then can't claim Energy Star as the rating system to do it. So if you're doing Energy Star and you want to do NGBS, it's sort of an instant baseline energy bronze. But if you want to get points for Energy Star, um, you know, then it's it's if you want to get the points and go higher than bronze, then it's I you know don't recommend using the Energy Star rating system because then you're just doing double duty. So it's focused on cost saving metrics rather than energy savings, which in some ways seems to pencil out the same way. Um, National Green Building Standard. Each credit in the prescriptive energy section is supposed to line up with a percentage improvement in IECC. So if you're looking at that workbook that I shared with you on Box, and you're looking at the prescriptive pathway under the energy section, um, you'll theoretically, every point that you get, that is trying to communicate to you that that is a percent reduction in the IECC uh, code or above code. So that's what they tell me. That's what they've said. You know, I haven't seen any studies or fact checked it, but Pretty cool if it's if it's true. Um, the other thing about NGBS is they don't care about home size. They give you a few extra points, 
Um, but there are no penalties for having larger homes with less bedrooms, and there are no rewards for having smaller homes um, with more bedrooms other than a few extra points um, in one of the different chapters, the material chapters, for being more resource efficient. But it's nowhere near the amount of impact that you'll see it have on the other rating systems. Okay, so LEED for homes. Um, LEED is built on the HERS index rating for low rise and single family. And then um, it's built on ASHRAE uh, 90.1, 2010, 5% or better um, for, mid, for, for high rise. Um, and then it requires Energy Star, whether that be Energy Star uh, low rise or Energy Star um, or Energy Star multifamily high rise. Uh, the interesting thing is it doesn't require certification in Energy Star, simply that you just show that you fouled all the protocols of Energy Star, but you don't have to certify. Um, so again, it's based on the Energy Star floating HERS index. The average is 70. Um, you must achieve 67 to get eight points. Unless you, uh, the interesting thing about LEED is there are trade-offs. So <clears throat> if your building is located in a more urban area um, with more community resources, you can actually achieve less points in the energy section. Um, because theoretically the homeowner or tenants are saving more points by traveling or more energy by traveling less. So there are trade-offs. You can put your points in the energy or the location side. Um, most projects on average score about a 62. And again, um, for every one point, earn one point for every 4% decrease in condition floor area um, in the lead rating system. And, you know, gut, re, gut re, uh, rehabilitations do have some exemptions. Um, so you don't have to bust up the slab to certify to leave for homes. But um, <clears throat> the home must be stripped to the studs on at least one side of the wall to, um, to do a gut renovation in the leave for homes program. So here's just a quick chart of how many points you're getting in lead um, if you're following uh, the HERS index rating system. Uh, the lead energy budget uh, is another alternative to um, to uh, to the HERS index rating. This is a report that's produced by the HERS index rating, and it basically has a lead reference home based on how big your house is, and then it has how your home is designed. And so <clears throat> you can see here we took the 20, 230 MBTU. And then um, as the reference, and then we took the 151 MMBTU as the actual, and then there's you can see a 34% reduction over the lead reference home. And so that's another way to score points. We see, I highly, highly encourage you to tell your HERS rater to, well, first of all, it's required to produce this report, but have them do it during the preliminary stage because you might find that this report gets you more points than the HERS rating does. Um, so make sure to check that out. Um, Typically, this, this, this uh, report is good for homes that are smaller. Um, so again, the HERS index rating penalizes smaller homes. So this is going to be a little more rewarding to them. Um, and then also all electric homes, because the HERS index rating does penalize um, electric because of site versus source um, energy loss. And again, here is just the table of percent reduction above the reference home and how many corresponding points you get in lead. Um, operation, the building operation and maintenance program um, for so lead EBOM for existing buildings, 20 units or more in multifamily. Um, this program does not use the Energy Star score, but rather does sync up with Energy Star Portfolio Manager. And this program is highly reliant on what your utility bills are and how you compare to the rest of the industry. They also are using a new tool called ARC, <clears throat> which is another way to input your energy data and score all of your points in a performance pathway on the EBOM program. So this is a simple tool. You can log in. You can check it out now if you want to go create a, an account on ARC. And basically what you do is you, um, you, you put in your energy usage um, for the building as is. And then, um, unfortunately, there's no, no conventional way to um, put in your predicted energy usage. Um, so what you have to do is get an energy model that kind of tells you what your, year, what your yearly predicted usage will be, electricity, gas, you name it. 
and then you just have to put it into the tool as if it actually happened and then see how you're comparing. And just so you know, it's always a moving target. So as the industry moves up, you know, if it takes you a year to complete your project and then you put your actual utility data in, which is how this thing scores your points, uh, you could be doing worse. So you always want to put in a cushion in there. Um, so what I'm trying to get at is, is <clears throat> hire an energy modeler for a building operations and maintenance program, but know that this is purely um, contingent on what your actual reductions are reported during the last one year reporting period. And, and then how you compare to other buildings um, in, you know, of your peers at that time. So you are, in some ways, when you go through this program, um, until you get more comfortable doing more of these, you're really, um, you know, you're kind of making uh, a guesses at it. But it is a great way to do a lead existing multifamily building, whereas lead for homes does not always apply. All right, so the 2015 Enterprise Green Communities Program. Uh, this program, like LEED, is built on the HERS index rating, uh, 85, or ASHRAE 90.1 2010, um, where states have adopted that code, or 2007, where states have only adopted that code, interestingly enough. And then on top of that, for new construction, it requires the Energy Star certification, full-blown certification, uh, to achieve the Enterprise Green Communities Program. So project types, low-rise, uh, substantial renovations with masonry buildings and those that predate 1980 can actually achieve a HERS index rating of 100 as your baseline to score off of. So they've really allowed some of these old historic buildings to still participate in the program using the HERS index rating. Um, if they're following, oh, and then if, if for substantial rehabs, and then if you're doing a moderate renovation, which is not tearing out any walls, uh, all you have to do is achieve uh, 100 on the uh, on the HERS threshold. And so you have access to this, and we're not going to get into it too much, but you can see, um, you know, again, you've got your low-rise new substantial or your low-rise masonry retrofit. And again, this is how many points you're going to get. Um, so you can see that this really... Uh, caps out at a HERS 73, which isn't that low, caps out at 27% better than ASHRAE 2010, which is, you know, a, actually a pretty decent number for uh, for nowadays. Um, and then if you've got a mod rehab, you know, it, it, you can top your points out at 12. So we see a lot of project teams, uh, especially in the low-rise world, really capping out their energy points um, in the uh, Enterprise Green Communities Program. It's really easy to do. They don't have high thresholds. All right, DOE Zero Energy Ready Program. Uh, this program is, again, built off the HERS index as its baseline. Uh, and then that, again, is built off Energy Star or IECC 2012. So what I mean by that is wherever Energy Star falls short in a prescriptive energy requirement pathway, let's just say thermal envelope R values, for example, well, IECC, if IECC is more stringent, then you have to follow that one for 2012, and then vice versa. So it's whichever one's more stringent. Um, and then, remember, we talked about Indoor Air Plus. This program requires um, Indoor Air Plus certification, and then, boom, you get this. So this is really more than just zero energy ready. Um, this is also a uh, indoor air quality program, which is also required um, in that. And the same thing for gut rehabilitations. There are some exemptions for guts on this program. So make sure to read through all those exemptions on what you have to do or don't have to do uh, to achieve the gut rehabilitation, um, you know, for the um, Energy Star pathway on that program. All right, so moving on to Passive House, um, same concept here. Passive House, you can really see how these, a lot of these programs, they just, they just build off of each other. So the U.S. version of Passion House, Passive House, HERS Index, Energy Star, IEC 12, Indoor Air Plus, Zero Energy, and then um, and then you've got to start to apply the other passive house uh, energy efficiency principles, which we'll get into um, during our other sessions. Um, but it's really hitched itself to these programs as their baseline. Now, if you're following the um, if you're following the international version of passive house, you would find it down here because it doesn't require any of these things. 
and then the, the top tier program, the International Living Future Institute's Living Bill Challenge. Um, this program really requires net positive energy at the end of the day. 105% of the project's energy needs must be supplied by on-site renewable energy um, without the use of any on-site combustion. Not only that, but they actually require that buildings have some sort of backup system or are connected to some community of a backup system should a grid failure, sh not should, but when a grid failure occurs, um, and that the, pro the, pro the project can at least supply some of its emergency energy needs um, during a, uh, during a, a week-long uh, time. So really we're talking about going beyond energy efficiency to net positive energy to uh, what we call uh, resiliency here um, with the energy pedal for the um, um, net positive or zero energy ready program <coughs> or zero energy program through the Living Building Challenge. So again, here's just a quick way to look at this, uh, higher energy use. So <clears throat> these are programs that have higher energy use as their requirements. And then these are programs that have lower energy use as their requirements. Another way, of course, to look at it for low rise residential is you've got your HERS index rating, um, higher number worse, lower number better. You can see IECC, your IECC codes where they fall. Um, and so really what you have here, again, is you've got your Enterprise Moderate Rehab Program, um, which falls on the HERS index scale of 100. You've got your New Construction um, Enterprise Program, which falls in at 70 Energy Star required. <clears throat> you've got Energy Star, again, that's kind of on that floating HERS index, and LEED that's on that floating HERS index that sort of averages at 70. Green Star requires IECC 2015 or HERS index of 60 as its baseline, so it kind of floats around here. Zero Energy Ready um, falls in around 50. Um, we like to think the passive house programs probably fall in around somewhere in the 20s. Uh, I put this here because if, if you can achieve a zero energy capable badge on our Green Star program, the furthest you can go is um, is the silver level certification without picking up points in the rest of the rating system. And the same goes for LEED. Interestingly enough, if you look at the workbook and the corresponding points, you actually cannot uh, go above a LEED certified building if you take away all the other points and only meet all the prerequisites and then get a HERS index of zero. You can't go beyond the certified level. So even a zero energy LEED certified home if it if it accounts for none of the other green building uh, attributes or five pillars of green, um, it can only be certified. Um, so I found that to be interesting. Now, exchange that here. Um, uh, so that same concept does in some ways apply with Home Innovations Lab, uh, National Green Building Standard, but they've taken it to a little bit of a higher level. So again, I showed you that chart before, but it, just to put it in context, a bronze level a uh, certified home is probably somewhere around <clears throat> 65 to 70. Silver is probably around 50 to 60. Gold's around 40 to 50. And emeralds around uh, sort of that 40 to 50 area. And those are just to achieve the energy performance pathway. So again, you still have to pick up all of your green points in the other five pillars or four pillars uh, to also achieve certification in these. Um, and then of course, living building challenge is net positive. Now, I put this over here because, again, I just wanted to show you that the Home Innovation Lab on the renovation side doesn't care about the IECC code, doesn't care about the HERS index. So it's just taking your building, if you have a terrible building that's over here, and you can just improve it by 25, 35, 45 percent, well, you might have a building that performs here relative to all these other homes. So in some ways, if you're looking for an easy-to-use program with low requirements, here you go. But um, on the renovation side, you know, if you have a NGBS renovation, it could be somewhere over here. If you have a lead renovation, you know it's here. There's no other way around it. It's got to be hitting this target using the HERS index rating. So um, that is a different way to, if you're talking with people and someone's saying, well, yeah, I did an NGBS and we cut our energy use by 60%. Well, what does that mean? Where was it starting in the first place? And we wouldn't know that without using um, REM rate or the HERS index rating. And following some of that same logic, the green line here is sort of the ASHRAE um, 90.1 improvements. Uh, so again, you can see, um, 
Enterprise Green Communities requires 15% above 2007 for if that's where the state code is, or 15% above 2010 if that's where the state's code is. Um, Energy Star High Rise is 15% above 2007. Uh, LEED falls in at 5% above 2010. Um, passive House and Living Building are just going to kind of blow these out of the water and have no comparisons to ASHRAE. And then um, Home Innovation Lab, um, you can use the ASHRAE tool to find the uh, energy savings, um, but um, for the most part, these are following the IECC code, even when you get into high-rise buildings. So they're really wanting you to use the REM rate software through IECC uh, to follow that. So you can kind of see that somebody who made this chart tried to figure out where the IECC, how they line up with the ASHRAE, so residential and commercial codes. Uh, Green Star, we have our starting threshold at 2013, and then you can score extra points um, as you go lower than that. And that's it. So um, that wraps up our, our sort of energy baseline programs and how they start to get in. Um, again, a lot of these serve as energy prerequisites. So we've sort of already started covering, by going through this, we've covered some of the energy prerequisites. Um, but during the next session, we're going to be taking a deep dive into the all five pillars of green energy, health, water, materials in place, and what's required of them across each of the rating systems and then how those uh, how those compare. So again, I want to thank you all, and I have some time here for questions. And as the questions are coming in, I wanted to thank our um, sponsors, uh, Sun Intuitive Self-Tinting Glass, Build Equinox with the Serve, Geo Comfort Systems, who now have um, full-blown water-to-water uh, water heating application in their systems, uh, Niagara Conservation, Panasonic Ventilation, and Certainty air renew formaldehyde eating drywall we couldn't do it without them we couldn't do it without you we couldn't do it with our members our board of directors and again while more questions are rolling in um, if you're watching this live uh, take um, check your email uh, you'll be getting your certificate take the survey if you're watching this on demand make sure to complete that 10 question quiz with an 80 percent um, passing rate so again we have a little bit of time here for some for some questions, if you have any. All right, so I don't see any other. Okay, so we do have a question here. Um, so many certifications, are these aimed at informing the general public or more likely to confuse them? Well, you know, it's interesting. Um, you know, a, a lot of people say there should just be one, uh, one certification. Um, and, you know, I mean, the reality is, is we live in the free market here. And um, so as much as it would make life easier to have that, uh, what you have is, you know, the freedom, all these, all these organizations have the freedom to create their own program as they deem fit and make whatever inroads they want. And some of the benefits that have come out of this is that you've really forced other programs not to sit idle and um, ensure that they uh, continue to innovate, um, which I think was always the intention of a free market. And then on the other side, of course, you're also pushing down costs and making as these programs become more competitive with each other, we've seen a lot of organizations lift up on their fees and reduce their fees um, for the market at all. So the benefit to, I think the benefit to the general public, who is of course going to be confused by all these systems, is number one, um, we expand green building certifications. So the general public is going to just simply demand more green building certification when they buy a house. Um, and so they're also, there's already proof to show that they're paying anywhere between 2% to 12% more um, for this. And that also governments are giving out more uh, tax credits and grants for these types of things. Um, and then I think second is that you've got these programs that are causing the market to move and sort of trickle down to those maybe who aren't doing green certification but that they're being sort of um, required to or um, asked to build a better product because some of these have been uh, moving the market along. So, you know, I agree. Um, and I, I will tell you this, it, it, you know, the, the, the International Green Construction Code and the ASHRAE 189.1 for commercial are kind of that, that, right? I mean, if this was just code, then we wouldn't have to worry about this. So 
as codes start to progress and step out of just energy and start to go into the other four pillars of green, um, then they uh, start to get adopted. And then it just becomes, um, you know, eventually this will just become normal to do this. It, it'll be a normal thing to do. And there probably won't be um, any any real programs that exist. But, you know, we're a long ways off of that. And so we're still seeing, um, you know, a lot of um, innovation. So any sales advantages found to having more than one certification? So, yeah, I mean, if you watched during the first session, we talked about how these ratings are a tool in, in your tool belt. Um, and so you want to employ different tools depending on what your client's needs are, demands are, funding sources are, um, or your constituents or your low income housing tax credit authority or whoever you're working with. You know, one of them might come to you and say, you know, we're doing a moderate renovation. Well, if you listen to anything I said, you'll know that if someone's doing a moderate renovation, then, you know, lead for homes is out of the question. Um, it just isn't going to work. And so you've got to go with Green Star or National Green Building Standard or the, um, you know, the enterprise program. You know, on the flip side, if you're trying to use the most reputable, the most marketable, the most well-known, and you've got an audience who's not just national, but maybe international in scope, then you're probably going to be looking at the lead rating system because, honestly, pe more people know what that is than what Energy Star is. And I mean, nobody knows that Energy Star certifies homes. They know it certifies products. Um, you know, but but not uh, but not homes per se. So, um, so yeah, I think it's important to have an awareness of each of these and to know how to effectively employ one of them, depending on what the uh, you know what the client is and, and and what the scope of work is. All right. Well, thanks everybody for your time. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up now, and we will catch you on the next session where we're going to cover prerequisites. Thank you, and have a good rest of the week.